Hello! My name is Bridget Charlton, and welcome to my first makeup tutorial. I'm going to be doing Made You Look by Lex, What the Puck, you should totally go check that out. And I'm going to be using Skin Safe Silicone, Alcohol-Based Paints, and an assortment of beauty makeup and water-based paints. So to start off, you want to cover your entire face in a very light concealer or foundation. I didn't have anything much lighter than this, so that's what I used. This is about as pretty as I'm going to be for this entire video, so enjoy it while you can. Dab that out till you're nice and smooth. You then want to add that same concealer to your eyebrows, not to cover them, but just to lighten them up. On to the silicone. Skin Safe Silicone, I emphasize Skin Safe, otherwise known as Third Degree, that's the brand that I use, is a more advanced product and is a little bit more expensive. Skin Safe Silicone is a two-part product, parts A and B, and when using it, you do not ever want to mix them together in the jars. It will cure, and then you'll get those lumps that you're seeing on my face right now, and you won't be able to work it into the skin any longer. You want to take three popsicle sticks labeled A, B, and C, and obviously use popsicle stick A and B for their respective jars, and mix them together with popsicle stick C on a plastic plate. You want to take Popsicle Stick C, or a flat object, and smooth it into your skin where you want it to be peeling. Now, made you look, used liquid latex, which is very simple. You just put the liquid latex down, and when it dries, you pick at it so you have that peely skin texture. I personally am not a big fan of latex, so I decided to go with silicone. Glob that onto your face and then make sure to smooth out the edges. Make time for those very, very necessary sassy snaps. Now, frostbite is a pretty gruesome thing to look at. If you're a younger audience member, I don't recommend looking it up. Just use me or made you look as your reference. Once you have your silicone on your face, you want to use your flat object, either a little sculpting tool, a popsicle stick, your finger, whatever, and you want to move the silicone out from the center to the edges. This makes it look like the skin, this skin graph you've created, is peeling. The longer you wait, the drier it's going to get, the harder it's going to be to work with. I find with this particular look, it worked even when I had waited a little bit longer. If anything, it gave it a more torn texture, so I didn't think that was all that bad. You want to repeat this process on all of the sections of your face and or neck that you are making to look like have been affected by frostbite. I then went in with more of a little sculpting tool and completely messed up my chin. You're now going to have to endure the horrible chin flap for the rest of this video. Ah, I'm still not very happy about that, but it is what it is. As you can see with the neck right there, that silicone had basically dried, so I kind of popped an air bubble to make it look torn. Again, with this look, that kind of works, but if you're trying to make something more like scales or burns, you're going to have to work with it as it is curing not while it is cured. I'm then going to go in with very alcoholed down bruise tone and gray and start dappling that on all of my wounds. Now, alcohol-based paint can only be activated with 99% alcohol. You can't just go out and buy that. You have to order it online. It will not be activated with 98%, 95%. It's got to be 99%. Be careful around the eyes because it will burn and you'll kind of wish that you were never born. So again, you want to start with that bruise tone, going in with a sponge with holes torn out of it, and then layer on gray to make it look like the skin is irritated and dead. So here I am just taking a regular little cosmetic sponge that you can buy in the drugstore and taking little holes out of it. This gives it a more textured look. It makes it look like your capillaries have burst. It makes it look more like a skin effect, instead of just, here is a sponge that I have dabbed onto my face. You want to make sure that there's a lot of alcohol in all of your paints so that it looks more translucent and more realistic. 
After you have your bruise tone and your gray layer down, you want to put a little bit of blood tone. I then put in a little bit of black into all of the pocked holes to really deepen the wound and make it look like the frostbite has seeped truly deeply into my skin. You then want to layer on some blood tone to make it look like the wounds are bleeding. Now you could put on some fake blood, I didn't have any on me, and I think this is a little bit cleaner, so that's what I did. I'm then going to use my Made You Look brush and powder it to take away the shininess. This makes it look more realistic and less like you have skin safe silicone on your face. I'm then going in and adding final details. Now the mouth. You want to take those sponges with the pocked holes, go in with bruise tone branching out. This gives it that nice, disgusting, broken capillary look. Do that until you're sufficiently grossed out. Then line the inner most part of your mouth with black, branching out just a little bit, and top it off with blood tone. It sounds like I'm telling you a really disgusting recipe, and in a way I kind of am. You then want to go over all of your wounds with a little bit of blood tone. We're then going to go over to our water activated paints. Yes, you need water to activate these. I use Mayron's Paradise paint. And then you want to put a little bit of white on the tips of all of your little skin flaps. Gross, right? It's great. Makes it look like they're nice and frosty. You then want to take a nice gray eyeshadow and sink in your eyes. So you want to put that underneath your eyes with a big old fluffy brush. Make it look like you're a sufficiently tired frostbitten hockey player. You know, you didn't really sleep well being frozen face down to the ice. Then put on some blush tone onto your lids. Have a sassy little music break. And add that white water-based paint to your eyebrows. And we're done. Here's the face. I'm wearing my school's William Patterson University hockey jersey sweatshirt. You can do that, or you can do what I'm about to do, and paint yourself. Costume change! Yes, I'm wearing a tube top. We're gonna paint on the jersey. Don't worry, it's gonna be cool. We're first going to take an angled brush, dip it into that water-based paint, and create the collar of our jersey. The thing you're gonna notice throughout this entire video is I have difficulty creating straight lines and circles. You're then going to outline your collar in black paint. Please make sure that all of the products you used are approved for use on the skin, especially on the face, you don't want to be using acrylic paints or anything that's not meant for skin use. After doing the collar, we're going to paint in our little shoulder pads. I'm from New Jersey. We don't say Jersey, but I'm from New Jersey. I'm a Jersey girl, so I'm doing the New Jersey Devils for mine. Made You Look did her home Chicago team, but I'm doing my home Jersey team. Ah, uh, who needs ASMR when you have body paint? Black is like the most satisfying paint to fill in and the single worst paint to remove. It just does not like leaving your skin. And now you're going to look like an awkward naked frostbitten football player. Okay, arguably the worst part. Painting on your team's insignia backwards in the mirror so this took me about seven tries like 40 minutes so don't feel bad if you don't get it the first try but you want to be painting this if you're painting it on yourself it should be backwards in your mirror keep some key reference photos on hand and just keep calm and carry on. It is okay if you don't get it the first time. This is arguably the single hardest part of the entire look. Here we are. Difficulty with painting circles. It's okay. Water-based paint just wipes right off with a little bit of water. Even easier with makeup remover. So just, if you mess up, try again.
Once you have your insignia outlined, you want to move on to the sleeves. Now, the devils don't have any symbols besides numbers on their sleeves. They just have black and white stripes, so that's what I started doing next. Be careful because it's very, very easy to get paint on whatever shirt or tube top or sports bra you're wearing. So that's what I did. Don't ruin your favorite clothes. Flexing for awkward situation in painting your bicep is optional. I just personally was very self-conscious painting that in front of my camera crew. And you want to go in and start filling everything in with white. You then want to go in and start filling in all of your detail colors before filling in the rest of your jersey. My colors are red, black, and white, so that's what I started doing. I used Mayron Paradise paint for the black and the white, and Wolf paint for the red. Oh no! Here we are! We're all painted now! Here's our jersey. Time to add some details. At this point, it was about 4 in the morning, so I wasn't very enthusiastic. So to add the details, you want to really think about where the wrinkles would naturally be in a shirt. So I added them underneath the arms with a detail brush and angle brush, and then went in with a fan brush for added texture. I personally love using fan brushes for this kind of thing. It's great for, like, robot arms and robot detailing on metal and fantastic for clothes. You want to then just very, very lightly brush on some black detailing. Again, flex in those muscles to prove that you have gains and you're not just a flubbery mess. I then went in and started adding the highlights with a detail brush. So I added them to the tops of my shoulders, the tops of any wrinkles that I added to my shirt. Again, just think about where the light would naturally hit your clothes. I then went in and put some of that water-based paint on my eyelashes if you have white mascara, that works too. Okay, I've never painted my hair before, so that was fun. Water-based paint is safe to put in your hair, just I wouldn't recommend doing it if you're a dyed blonde. A little bit on your ears, make them look all frosty. And put a little bit of snow on your shoulders, made you look, use some like packing peanut-esque looking stuff, but I just stuck with paint. And here's the final look. Perfect for your next holiday party, be it for Halloween or Christmas. Who doesn't want to be a dead frostbitten hockey player? This was a lot of fun to make. I want to give a special shout out to my friend Michael Schutz, without whom this wouldn't have been possible. He had all of the equipment, edited everything. Also, special shout out to Val, who stuck with us through the whole thing, even though he fell asleep at 4 o'clock in the morning. This was a lot of fun. You can follow me on Instagram at Bridge Creations and see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. I'll see you next time. Bye!